what happens with nonpolar covalent is you have two covalent bonds. You have one covalent bond. You have two. Uh, We're just showing you electrons. Yeah. We'll say like. Um, I'm trying to think of one. Well, here's a good one. Nonpolar covalent. So you have oxygen and oxygen. Now y'all drawn Lewis structures before, right? You practice that? A little. A little. So let's practice that, and we'll get to figure it out. We'll kind of combine some things. So I have an oxygen and oxygen here. How many valence electrons does this ox or does both oxygens contain? Together. Um, separate. So how many does six. this one have? Six. Yeah, and this one has six. So you have twelve. So obviously they're bonded together, right? And then we draw the rest. So two, four, six, eight. 10, 12, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So that's how it is kind of right now. But, you know, if we look at these, is this oxygen satisfied right here? No. Yeah. Is this one? No. No. So what can we do? Yeah. How can we do that? Take off the two electrons and draw a line. Perfect. So. Now this is a stable molecule. Both oxygens are happy. We just drew a little structure for it. Now we can look at, okay, is this a polar bond or is this a nonpolar bond? And already looking at it now, judging from you know the two that we've done, we know it's not a hydrogen bond because look, there's no hydrogen anywhere in there. Plus hydrogen isn't in the molecule itself, it's between two separate. And then we know it's not a ionic bond because they don't have charges. So because it's equal, it's not polar. Uh-huh. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, so they're the same molecule. So we ask, is this oxygen going to pull more electrons than this one? Mm -hmm. They're the same. It's like if you had, if we made a duplicate of you, a clone, and we had you do type of work, you'd probably both give up at the same time because <laughs> you're the exact same. That's what's going to go on here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is a, this is a non-polar. Nonpolar, it's always going to be nonpolar if one, they're the same atom, same element, same atom, okay? If um, also a good way to look at polarity is if it's a it's a symmetric type molecule. So if we had something, you know, we'll just say like this. We had this atom in the middle, and it had four of these all around it. However that is, that's going to be symmetric, because they're all going to pull equally and cancel each other out. Okay. Another good thing to notice, and this is something I do, I think they went over in class, a non one nonpolar molecule, always going to be nonpolar as far as we're concerned, is your carbon to your hydrogen. Always nonpolar. So if you end up getting some, if it just shows you this, it, they're two separate, right? So we would think, That's you know. That's the one you were saying, CH3, just consider it yeah, polar. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That was when I was like going through it. We were solving one of the problems, we were going through it, and I was like, kind of figured it out, and it was just, then it hit me. I remember <laughs> that. So as far as we're concerned, it's just, yeah, it's nonpolar. So that would be a nonpolar bond, too. Okay. Just kind of remember it. I didn't, I, there's a high school back right in front of Texas. It's called Coordinado High School, so I just remembered CH. And this is my way of remembering, but figured whatever works out best for you. So, any questions about nonpolar covalent bonds? Oh, that kind of work. Cool. Van der Waals, though. Van der Waals. Yeah. Knew that one was coming. And the only difference with polar is that it's unequal. Perfect. Sharing, right? Yeah. Okay. Polar, non -polar, or polar is just the complete opposite. Okay. It was like if we put oxygen with fluorine. That's going to have some polarity because while oxygen wants it, fluorine wants it more. So that's going to pull those electrons, or even way more. If we, uh, the first example we drew, we had the fluorine with the hydrogen, that's very polar. Okay. So, Vanderwaals.